Welcome to the About This Love podcast with your host Alan Sherell. To get all the latest ATL podcast news and media, please follow About This Love on Instagram, Discord, Facebook, and YouTube. Please consider supporting the About This Love podcast today by submitting a donation via PayPal or Cash App. Click on the link below to find our podcast and social media platforms. Thank you. Now for today's episode. How you guys doing today? Welcome, welcome. We are back in the building about this live podcast with myself, Dale, and my wife, Sherelle. Say what's up to the peoples. Hey, hey. Hope you guys had a good week. We definitely had a good week with all these holidays festivities behind us. Let's um, continue business as usual. Drum roll. What's the topic for today, bae? Wait, so you're not going to insert the drum roll? Nah. Okay. <laughs> so today, me and my wife were having a conversation um, friend of mine's called me like a couple months ago we gave him some, some wise counsel and he actually considered it but um one of the things that i actually we actually talked about me and my buddy is just how how do we make decisions um when it comes to like changing events that happen in our life whether whether it's marriage college or accepting a job in another in another state or choosing to marry somebody and um having to kind of make a choice between marrying them and hoping that they would you know travel with you to the, on the state that you got a job offer or if you even if you just stay in the current city that you're in you know and not accept the job offer but just how do we get to a point in our lives where how do we like what do we, what what do we have around us to, to make those big life decisions so you know just kind of wanted to bring that to you guys today kind of just raise the conversation um and, and raise you know just raised it to you guys so Sherelle, so what do you do or who, who do you go to when you know when, when we've had those those big life decisions that we've had to make well, I was just thinking about what I've done before because a lot of people don't have, you know, you said that you gave him wise counsel, but, you know, not a lot of people have that. A big decision was deciding to leave my job when I was a single mom. And I had no plan other than I had to leave my job so I could be available for my son. That was a pretty big decision because being in the salon doing hair, that was my bread and butter. And the owner of the salon actually got upset with me. She she thought that maybe I had gotten another job somewhere else. And she didn't know in which direction I was going in. But honestly, I didn't know. And I felt like I went to the Lord. I mean, I know it just that might just sound a little too vague. But I feel like oftentimes we don't consult with the Lord on things until after it, you know, it go to crap. Or after we find ourselves in a mess. But... I was just like, Lord, I see that you're pulling me away from this so that I can focus on my son, but I'm also a single mom. How is this about to look for me? And, um, you know, I actually had one client who, I mean, I just looked at her as having like a good head on her shoulders. I mean, she was much older than I was or that I am. She was very focused, I can say. And so... I think one day I was telling her that I was leaving and I didn't know what I was going to do afterwards. And so she said, well, do you have any idea? And so I said, well, I think, you know, I might travel um, to my clients' homes. And you guys, you know, this is before all of the madness with COVID and everything. So it was just like, you know, I considered it, but I wasn't 100% sure. And so she was like, well, then do that. And, you know, that right there gave me the confidence to move forward in my decision or even in my in my plan. And I really didn't like have a plan, you know? Yeah. And so I mean, if I'm honest, I I just to answer your question, Dale, I consulted with the Lord because I really didn't have anyone to go to. But what I did know is that I needed to make a change. And so because this was a big change, you know, being a single mom Choosing to leave your job and not have um, a backup, that's not really an option for people, you know? Yeah. I mean, shoot, even if you're married and have um, and have children, you have people depending on you, that's not an option to not work. And, I, I mean, it's not that I had mommy and daddy to fall back on. I mean, I, I did not. You know, that's, the, that's what I thought about when you wanted to bring up the topic of, like, making those life decisions. Like, who did I go to before? Because I know there's a lot of people who um, you and I speak with and they have a lot of decisions to make. And it's almost like, yeah, they come to us to talk about it, but then they're still trying to sort it out for themselves. And it's kind of like, Hey, I mean, not that whatever we say is law, but 
I mean, this is, I can just see your situation a little bit clearer than you can. And that's probably why you're coming to us. We also like try to, <laughs> yeah, we love you. And we've um, tried to grab insight from the Lord on your situation and just the direction that he has you going in. But at the same time, did you go to the Lord? You know, did you write it out for yourself and then just say, Lord, this is what I have on the table I'm going to go for it because um, I think oftentimes we make that we make that mistake of like, well, I'm going to just stay right here and don't do anything. I'm not going to go forward, going to go backward. I ain't going to, you know, quit. I'm just going to stay right here until I hear the Lord come down and say, you know, yes or no. I mean, that's that's true. That's true. Oftentimes um, people don't have people in their lives that they can really fall back on or, or get a grab or get insight from. Um, I will share a little bit of the story without sharing too much. Um, and I'll be very vague, but long story short, um, a buddy of mine's um, a couple months ago, he had called me and my wife for prayer, you know, definitely prayed with them and just gave him wise counsel. But I mean, nevertheless, I mean, I'll let him know that, you know, the, the decision that you have to make, it is one that is going to take much prayer and, and fasting in consideration. And the, um, the situation, you know, in a nutshell, was that he's working in, in a field for in a specific field for a while, and he finally got his, he finally got his big break after you know kind of uh, putting work, you know, um, doing a little odd jobs or working for odd jobs in, in, in that field. He finally got a big break with the company in another state, you know, making some real good money, you know, like life changing money, you know. So, but the the dilemma that he was running into was that you know he, he also has a lady that you know he he's they've been kind of on and off for a couple of years now in another state where he used to live and so he was just calling to ask you know well really you know, i don't know what to do and you know in a long story short because the relationship i felt was was very demanding and i, I just told him that you know me and my wife just told him that you know based off what he had what he had shared with us that we felt like the, the relationship was very conditional and not unconditional and so i was like you know to be honest man we were laughing because um, i quoted the, the eminem song you know um he was like when he, when he said you only got one shot are, are you gonna capture it or just let it slip and that's why I said to him, I, I said, you know, you have an opportunity of a lifetime, you know, with this company, you probably won't get again. I said, I'm not going to say that God can't, you know, give you another opportunity. I said, but it took you five to six years to get this opportunity. You know, I said, so are you willing to wait another five to six years for an opportunity like this to, you know, maybe turn to that, turn it down for a relationship that you've kind of been on and off with for a couple of years? I was like, that's probably not very wise, you know. Now, I told him, I think one, one night he called, he was like, he was going back and forth for, the, for, for a while, for a couple couple months now. And he, he called me and was like, well, what should I do? And, you, you know, I basically, in, in a nutshell, I told him, I said, you know, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I said, because I don't want to become a God to you. I said, and not only that, I said, but I feel like this is something that you have to wrestle with, you know, with the Lord and you have to hear from the Lord and be assured what the Lord tells you. I said, now the good news is you're a son of God. I said, so whatever decision that you make, God will bless either decision. I said, if you choose to stay and be, you know, with the young lady you've been on and off for for a couple of years, I said, God will bless that. If you choose to go another state and take the job offer, I said, God will bless that. I said, but you, but you have to choose. You know, I think you know, really, really, really worked out for him. You know, he made a choice. I won't say what that choice was because this is no one's business. But I will say that you know, as as him and I were talking, uh, we were kind of laughing because I was like, you know. It's interesting because oftentimes I said people people make life changing decisions and never even considered to seek wise counsel. I said so you know you know kind of bravo to you you know that you had the courage to do that because a lot of people would have just would have just may have done something and not thought about the repercussions that that it could have you know caused in the future. You know what I'm saying? Because let's all be honest, I'm 30 years old. I've been in my field for March would be 11 years, so I caught my break in my field in about 2016, 2017. At the same time, um, I had met my wife the um, the year before. We were beginning to engage in a serious relationship. So I know how serious it is to to have a career that you're now coming to a new hike financially. And it's like, are you really w willing to walk away from it, you know, for a relationship? Now, uh, you know, thank God, me, me and my, my situation was different because me and my wife, we both generally lived in the same area. Well, she lived, she, she lived an hour away from me, but it was generally, I was driving to work for about an hour, so it wasn't really a problem for us to kind of um, see each other whenever we wanted to, um, you know, when I was off, because I was used to driving an hour back and forth to work. So that was, that was nothing. But my point is, is like, I definitely understand the validity of having to choose to make that kind of decision. To me, it, with that situation, it becomes easier. Like, if me and my wife were dating and we, and we were on and off, for me, it would have been a, it would have been an easy decision because it would have been like, well, I don't want to miss a job opportunity on us when we seem to be on and off all the time. 
Does that make sense? I was about to ask you, like, how does that, you know, I think that it goes back to why somebody is on and off because then I think if it's never addressed, like, I mean, the familiar, you know, it's like, oh, well, I'm with this person because we work together, but then when we don't work together or we can't get past something, that's when we need to take a break. And so some people are just used to that type of lifestyle. And I mean, they may compare it to a job and say, well, jobs aren't permanent either, right? So why would you risk your potential love, you know, your potential forever with someone on a job that may not last forever, right? And so I'm just sitting there thinking like, you know, it could it could go either way, but ultimately, like you said, a decision will have to be made. And I think that's the po- that's the part where the Lord wants us to get to that place of maturity where it's like, make a decision. Not rest in that, but be okay if the Lord like kind of moves you here or moves you there within that decision that you've made. But also to stand firm on that because, you know, and your belief that the Lord will um, see you through it whether it ends in a couple months or, you know what I'm saying, or a couple years or whether it continues on for the rest of your life. I'm just, you know, I'm just thinking about the different decisions that I've had to make that were life-changing decisions, which, I mean, it's like, you know, keeping my son, but being a, a single mom, you know, considering being a single mom. Now, I know that there's people who aren't who aren't with abortion or pro-life and, you know, and, and I get that. And I'm just kind of like, but these are real things that people face, you know? Yeah. I mean, I was about to um, hear my family tell it. I was about to graduate hair school and I was about to go travel and do hair in their mind. I had made it big, you know? And so it's like, Oh wow. You, you done did the ultimate, like, no, no, you done got pregnant. You can't go and see the world now. And I'm just kind of like the fact that that was brought up. I mean, I didn't even consider the person I was having the baby with, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like that, that's a big decision in itself. I didn't even think about those things. And I'm like, a lot of times before we get into these situations, like, I mean, when we lay down with someone, that is a big decision. But I think we just take it so lightly because it's so normalized. Like things like that or taking a career over a relationship. Or marriage. uh, Yeah, that's what I I mean. I've known known cats over the years. I'll say this probably was about, man, six, seven years ago. Because I know one, one instance, it happened twice in one year. Where I know brothers um, that I work with who you know who were believers who 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 got married, mm-hmm. and um I think one of well no I'm lying one of them was a believer the other one wasn't a believer one of the brothers was a he was a minister he, you know at a church and he would bring the the Sunday word and um I remember I heard when he I heard when he got married I was I was like oh my pr- praise God man you know because because most single men or single um men of God or women of God you know it's our desire to be married you know but I believe his marriage didn't last. Six months, and he was he was divorced, man. Wow. You know, because I remember, I remember, because um, I remember, I, I would see him, uh, I would see him, and I would work overtime because um, we we work different shifts. But you know, when you do overtime, you might have to work overtime on another shift. So I was working another shift. I said, hey, how you doing, brother? How, how's the wife and kids doing, man? He was like, man, we I, I got a divorce. I was like, I, I was like, man, quit playing, man. I was, I was like, you funny? He was like, nah, I'm serious. We got a divorce. I was like, my God, man, you know. And um, another another situation where it was a it was a brother. At my job, who got married and him and his wife got, I think they got a divorce in like three to three to four months. Like, they, they got a divorce, you know. And I was like, man. But it's, but again, people just hop into relationships, not really understanding. I'll say the person or or their background. All they might see, all the woman might see, is oh man, he got a nice job. He worked for the railroad, or he's a, he's in IT, so he made good money. He good in the bed, body look good, and or the dude might say, oh, she, you know, she's they got a nice body, A B C and D. But you never really consider like, yeah, all oh, that's cool. That's temporary satisfaction but can you live with this person like how is their personality is he or she real naggy are they disrespectful are, are, you know just, just things like things that you would have to want to know before you consider marrying somebody and and, and you know evidently um, cats didn't they didn't consider it i think people more so consider those things when looking for work like how convenient is it to you know drop it off my kids or to my current lifestyle i think that people do that more so for work than they do for relationships would you agree? Yeah, 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 I would agree. I would agree. But you know, as 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 you and I both um, find out the hard way, you know, in in my field, it's not really doable because you know, one day 
they may tell us we're working in another city. When they might, they might tell us we're working, you know, it might go there next week, and they say, "Hey, are we back in the other city?" Like, wait a minute, we were just working here. Instead of driving five minutes to work, I, I, I drive an hour and a half to work. It's like that's, that's how it is, though. But usually, it's usually within a, a seventy a seventy mile parameter I mean, with my job. But 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 I've been blessed enough. It's usually been about. It's usually been about under fifty miles, um, one way. But but still, you know. So in my profession, we don't always know where we're working at in January or February. We we, we may not know. We we might be in Virginia. We we might be in, in Baltimore. We might be in, in, in Philadelphia. You know, that's the parameter in my job. But usually, we know ahead of time. Like, hey guys, um, the next two months we're gonna be here. Then we're gonna be there. But so but but sometimes you, you, you get a call. Hey man, um, some some tracks um went bad and da 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 da. We we just like hey. Got got to go and move. Go drive the whole n- another city. That's the, that's the reality of life. Life isn't always you know what you said. Always you're not always able to, to to live where you work or work where you live. You know what I'm saying? No, but I was more so saying that people will consider you know the cost of a job before they consider the cost of a relationship. Yeah, you're right. I, I mean, yeah, sometimes it depends. Yes. No, I think most times they will consider like. Their job, they would they would make that decision. They would consider how that would affect them. Like, okay, if I take you know these two jobs or this job, you know, can my kids go to school here and I can get a discount? Like, they weigh that before they would weigh a relationship. Because I feel like in relationships, it's more so of like, yeah, let's see if this work out. Not, and I don't think people do that for you know, jobs. You're right. I get that to you. I get that to you. You're actually right. I just thought about that. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're actually right. Now, now that I think about it, because you, you see it all the time where people are like people may be um, living in New York, but um, engaged to somebody that lives in California. It's like, how how is going to work out? But it's like, hey, you know, it happens, you know. And who's willing to, you know, give up their life where they are? I yeah. think ultimately um, in any of those decisions, whether it be, you know, in any of those decisions, whether it be, you know, your job you getting into a relationship with someone, you actually marrying someone. I think, you know, like you going back to what you were saying, you know, getting wise counsel, but it, what if you don't have anybody who you can go and get wise counsel from? Like, then what? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I no, mean, go to the Lord. What do you mean? You don't know. You yeah, do know. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you're right. I was I was more so thinking like, um, because we've always had people in our lives we can go to. I was more so thinking on that basis. But yes, you're right. In most cases, people don't think people don't think to go to the Lord if 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 you, if you want to be honest. Well, you know, like I said, the maybe two or three biggest decisions I made it was before I was introduced to people who I can trust in the Lord. You know, and I felt like I made those decisions with the Lord like holding my hand, and so I feel like. I hadn't had too many people to walk me through those tough decisions. Um, having my having my child, uh, leaving work or moving back home or moving out, you know what I'm saying? Things like that, even getting married. I don't think I really had anyone walk me through. Yes, we had marriage counseling, but as far as that decision of like, should I marry this guy? It was, a, if I'm honest, it was the Lord. Yes, the people who counseled us, you trusted them. And because I got a chance to see your character and because, you know, the Lord gave me insight into who you were, I think that that helped me in making that decision with marrying you. I mean, yes, you had you had the Lord and then you also had people here in the faith that you could go to, that you trusted because you developed that relationship with them. But on my end, I was told by, like, close family friends, like, well, how do you know that you can trust his people because he has a relationship with them? And I'm like, well, they haven't treated me any type of way. And, you know, in our counseling, I've done nothing but felt open. They've done nothing but been open to me. And so, you know, even with that, it's like, how do you even know who to go to um, in the Lord? And it's almost like, I mean... Sometimes we go because we hear buzzwords. Like, I mean, I feel that we do that with relationships. Oh, the buzzword is marriage. So I'm going to stick with this person because they promised their last name or they promised a ring. Or I'm going to go with this job because they promised my number that I'm trying to get every year. You know, they promised a yearly salary. You know what, though? I think about it. No, I think about it. Like, um, to be honest, mm-hmm. when seeking wise counsel, um, yes, the Lord is and should always be my first option. And he is. But I also think that I, I think that. We we don't do God justice. 
And I say that because it's like, just because there's a person that I may not, like like you and I, everyone may not have a person in their life that they can talk to, but it doesn't mean that God God won't bring someone along. Because I, I know over the years when choosing my career field, I, I didn't know, like I was kind of, um, I was real nervous when I chose this career path. It's carnal in the sense that um, it wasn't really like the Lord, but I know, um, uh, well, it was a Lord, I'll say it was a Lord, but, but the guy um, I was like, yeah, man, um, I just interviewed for this job, blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't know if I want to do it. And, you know, within my company, we, there's like many different departments. So I t- actually talked to a guy who I, I didn't even know that he knew about this department. He was he was like, oh, what department? What, uh, what was it you going to? I told him, he was like, oh, man, they make money. I was I was like, really? He was like, yeah, man, you know, they, they get paid, brother. I was like, oh, man, that's what's up. Praise God. You know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, I mean, it was it was a carnal mm-hmm. reason, but it made me it made me want to go in that specific uh, craft with the railroad. Yeah, but that goes back to what I was saying earlier about how we still have to make that decision. Like, we waiting for God to say, yes, no, go, don't go. But it's like, we ultimately have to make the the decision. And then I feel like the Lord will redirect us if need be. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Like, we still have to go out there because I think the other extreme of people just jumping into things, I think that people don't do things because they they waiting on the Lord to like, nah, I'm just going to send this one spot to the Lord, move me. I ain't going to go nowhere Mm -hmm. to the Lord, you know, say go. And then like the light flicker and it'd be like, is that a yes, Lord? Or, you know what I'm saying? Like, (laughs) yeah. So, I mean, I I think I think that either way, I feel like either life is going to make the decision for you or, you know, you can make that decision, you know. Yeah. Her back, I think, uh, write the write on, write write the vision on the tablet, make it plain on the tablet. I mean, because back then, or they had, on like, the iPad. Back then, that back then they had like <laughs> stone tablets. Like, like, like I know like what God you mean. God gave um, Moses the Ten Commandments. They were on stone tablets. That's what that meant. But um, so let me ask you a question. So, what would you say to people who are on the other side of the extreme and just like, well, I don't need no wise counsel. I just, I just know when I know. You know, what would you, what would you say to people like that? I mean, I don't. I wouldn't debate with anybody like that because if they're if they're strong willed enough to feel like when they know, they know. I mean, we both know, like you and I both know, that's based off of their feelings. And I was just reading yesterday the scripture about how people who are like that are double minded. I mean, I- hold on, hold on. Let me let me read it to you. So and I I still want to look up that other scripture. Hold on. So it's like uh, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double minded and unstable in all they do. So like that's why I I don't argue with those type of people, because it's like. If you don't feel like you need any type of wise counsel, praise be to God. Like, I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with you about it because you're strong in that decision, in that way of thinking. And I mean, it says it in the scripture. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it I, says it in the scripture. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, I, I remember when, when I was younger, uh, when I was young in the faith and, and when I was young, when I was in my early 20s, man, I used to love arguing with balance. I used to love arguing with people. But now I'm to the age now, like, I don't really care. Like, like my, my wife said, like, that's one of the reasons why I didn't give my uh, my buddy an answer when he asked me, well, what should I do? And I was like, man, you already know what you want. We already know what you want to do. So I don't want to in- interfere with the decision that you want to make because I said, well, what will happen is um, in the past, I've seen it where someone comes to, you know, someone, you know, in the faith, whether it's a, a pastor or whatever, or apostle, and ask them, what should I do? And they do it. And then when it falls apart. They're mad at them. Like, oh, well, you told me this was the Lord and, and A, B, C, and D. So I was like, you know what? I never, I never make it, I never make it a stance in, in people's lives to, to become a God to them when it comes to making like hard decisions. I said, because I want that to come from the Lord and not me. Because, you know, like I said, when things go sideways, cats like, well, you said you heard from the Lord. I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 nah, brother. And what I said to him, I was like, you know, you, you have to wrestle with the Lord about this decision. And, you know, once the Lord breaks your leg, you know, then you can, based off, um, was it was Jacob uh, or was it Isaac in the scriptures? But it's like, you know, uh, no, it was Jacob, Jacob, before he went to meet back with his brother Esau after years of just, just being afraid because he, he had stole, he, he had stole his inheritance. So he was afraid that his brother Esau would want to kill him, you know, when he, when he saw him. But, but basically I said, nah, brother, you know, you have to, you know, wrestle with the Lord on that decision. And, you know, I said, and I would just say, if I was you, I'd fast for a few days and pray about it. I said, and then, you know, once you come to your decision, I said, but I said, but the good news is, I said, man, you're a son of God, man. I said, whatever decision you make, the Lord will honor it. 
I said, you know, um, some decisions may just may have to, you know, suffer for a while. I said, but praise be to God, I'm, I'm still a son of God. You know, there's nothing that the Lord can't redeem. Um, and I, it, it, it reminds me of the scripture in Genesis where I think about um, Abram when Abram first went to Egypt and he lied to Pharaoh that Sarah was his um, his sister and not his wife, which was true because she technically was his sister. She was his half sister, but. That wasn't really what he. That, that that really wasn't the. He put his the situation. wife. Yeah, yeah, he put his wife in jeopardy. That was his, that, that wasn't the situation. She was she was his wife. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? But basically, um, long story short, you know, even though Abram lied, God um came to the Pharaoh in a dream, and you know the Pharaoh was like basically like you know, <laughs> get your stuff and go. You know what I'm saying? You know, um, but I said that to say, even though Abraham made the wrong decision, God still prevailed. The Lord still showed up. Now the Scripture may not. Tell us whatever repercussions Abram might, might have had to endure because of making that wrong decision. But the Lord still prevailed, you, you know. So I, I just always tell people that, you know, whatever decision you make, man, just have peace about it because God can still show, show, show himself to be true in your life, whatever decision that you make. But, you know, I, I just I would seek wise counsel. I really would seek wise counsel a couple of years ago. I know a brother that I know, um, he had got married and him and his wife were have, having um, hard times in their marriage. And I said, man, you know, I think you guys should really probably seek counsel. He was like, nah, brother, they ain't, ain't want to want nobody in my business. You know what I'm saying? I was like, all right, all right, brother, cool, brother. You know what I'm saying? Do you, big dog? You know what I'm saying? But conflict kept arising in his marriage. So I went to him again. I said, hey, brother. I think you should really seek counsel in your marriage, man. You, you guys really need help. I said, you know, I've, I've been praying for you guys. You know what I'm saying? I said, but I think you guys really need to seek counsel, man. Y- y- y'all need help, man. I said, it's nothing wrong with that, brother. You need help. I said, I- I've gotten counsel in my marriage. You know, it's nothing wrong with that, man. You know, when you, when, when you hit a roadblock in your marriage, you need to get counseling because you two may not be able to uh, to come to a conclusion to get around the roadblock, you know? And so at that point, he said that, hey, well, his wife wasn't really wasn't up to it. But but then he, but he, then I later found out that he began to, he began to, to to get counseling just for himself to, to better to better his marriage. Even though, even though his wife didn't want it, he still got it. And I was like, "Hey, man, praise God, man!" I was because like, that's that's very honorable. Anytime you come to a point or a fork in the road or have to make a major decision, I would say, I can I can cho- I can choose help. I can choose getting help over falling flat on my face, or I can just choose to operate in pride. I don't need no help. All I got is King Jesus. I don't need nobody else. Well, brother, well, have good luck. You know, whatever repercussions come from that and like i've said on, on, on a previous podcast i'm totally 100 percent against that kind of mentality and i say that because um me and my wife we, we were actually um doing a doing a um a book study with some um, believers over zoom well, last month um we were reading the book of esther and one of the things that kind of kind of took kind of um i took note of is that um when the king had to make a decision the bible says that he sought his counsel, he sought his his wise men, and based off the decisions that they gave, he would take heed to it, and he, he carried out what they said. So I'm saying that to say, like, if if a king of a nation, if a king of a nation who rules hundreds of thousands of people is wise enough or smart enough to realize that, hey, I need counsel because I'm just one person, you know, and, and I, I can't always figure everything out for myself. I can't always make the right decisions. So I need these, I need these, these wise men around me to help me make these decisions. And whatever they say, I'll take it into consideration. How much more do, do we need help? Or how much more do we need to, to have wise counsel around us to make these, these tough decisions? You know, I, I, that's just things oftentimes that I, that I think about when I see people that say, well, I don't need no help. I'm good. Well, I wanted it's to pride. ask you. Yeah, no, it's definitely pride. Sorry for cutting you off. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what is wise counsel? Like, how do you determine that someone will give you wise counsel or not? Because, you know, at one point, I thought that the person I worked for had given me wise counsel. And and then I thought that, you know, and then I realized that a lot of the decisions were made, even though on the surface they seemed like wise decisions, but it was in the benefit of that person that I worked for. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, and they weren't, seeing the full picture for me they were looking at the full picture as it relates to you know the benefit of their own business like how do you seek wise counsel is that somebody that you like you pay for that or you know some uh, elder in a church or like what does that look like because I think a lot of times people hear a lot of good things like shoot I feel like there's a lot of memes floating around on social media that that a lot of people feel like that's like the right thing to do or that's the way to live or whatever. Yeah, I think that people, you know, look look to those things for their daily encouragement. And so it's just kind of like in your perspective, in your words, could you tell, 
you know, me and the listeners, like what wise counsel would be. Well, I mean, I can I can speak I can speak for myself. Um, I know what it looks like to to me. Um, I, I can't again. I can't I don't I can't speak for other people, but I know. Um, uh, you know, I've always I've always had strong believers and strong men and women of God in, in my life, um, who believe in the Lord and who are very strong and um in the Lord and, and also, but their character also is is blameless. Like dudes ain't out there, you know, sleep around with other women or do, women ain't out there, you know what I'm saying? Everybody business, they, they, they take care of their homes, they take care of their children or when the children, when they had children, because the children are probably grown now, so for some of them. But I just I always look for a person's character. Oftentimes, um, you know, when I, when I was younger, I would judge people based off of small things like, well, you know, well, he did this or he said it that way. But as I've gotten older, I've just learned to really just sit back and watch a person's character. You know, oftentimes I feel like if I can trust a person's character, then I then I probably can trust what they're saying. If I don't trust your character, and Bay, I mean, you know, we had a couple a, a situation a couple of years ago where there was a brother that we both we both know who we you know who were around us. We just we really didn't really didn't trust his character. You know, you know. So it's just, yeah. I feel like oftentimes there are people in our lives who do, to some extent, exemplify Christ to us, even if we don't want to admit it. You know what I'm saying? But, but for me. Like I said, um, and it kind of remind me of the book of Timothy. Paul gives um, Timothy the criteria for an elder. He, he, you know, he says a man that is blameless, a man that tends to his own house, a man who, you know, who, who, you know, basically some a man of integrity. But for me, it would be a, a man and a woman of, of faith who, you know, who, who are integrity, who is in, have integrity, and who their character is is blameless. You know, and I think that for me. That would be that that those are individuals who I have in my life. Those are individuals who I can I can seek. You know, and it's funny because I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've told people, um, um, I've always said this, um, since I was since I was um young. I don't, I don't, I don't like yes men. Like over the years, the men and women in my life who I love, and I look up to. Over the years, like, I mean, when I one time, I mean, my wife got into a conflict in my marriage, and one of them told me I was, my two of them told me I was tripping. There's, 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 oh, man, two of them. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> it's a man. You tripping, man? You are tripping. You know what I'm saying? And I was, I was pissed off at him. I was mad. I was angry. But when I actually sat down and reflect, I was like, they was right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes in life, you need somebody that's going to tell you, look, man, you tripping, dog. What you're doing is crazy, man. You ain't treating your wife right. You ain't, you know, you, you, you ain't been, um, you know, you're not, you're not being responsible. You're tripping. Cut it out. You know, we still love you, brother. We still going to, you know, pray for you and still build you up. But it's like, that's what you need in your life. But a lot of people, they don't want that. They don't like that, you know. They cool with you as long as you tell them, you know that that you know. I, I, I the Lord showed me in the future. I saw you with a house and six figures, you know. Oh, praise God, brother. Oh, we, we love you, brother. But when the moment you go to to cor- correct them, they, they they have a problem with you. It's a problem, you know. Yeah. what I'm saying so. I, I know um, I've always been an individual that's always um um been been good with with the blessings and and the critique and the criticism. I've been okay with both because if if you love me. I know that you're not going to tell me something. You're not going to tell me something that that is harmful to me. But you're going to tell me the truth. You know, it's funny because um, um, me and one of my um, me and my me and one of my good friends, um, him and his wife, we always go back and forth. Um, you know, jokingly. But again, she's another person that you know when I'm tripping, she's like, she's like, Dale, man, you tripping, yo? You really tripping right now? Yo. You, you tripping? And again, over the years, over the years, it's pissed me off. But <laughs> who cares, yo? Who cares? Yeah. Ain't nobody tr- trying to trying to coddle nobody's pride or ego. You know, if you love me and if I love you, I should be able to tell you the truth. And, and, and you know, my, my wife can, my wife can attest to it. Um, it's people, it's people in my, my family, you know, that I'm very close to that over the years, I've, I've told them the truth, you know, and, and they get mad and cut me off. And these are people that, you know, her and I have, have both been willing to support financially. But it's like, you know, I, I not just financially, not, well, not just financially. I mean, what I'm saying is what I'm saying is like, we haven't been people who have just criticized verbally, but we, we've also gave help when help is needed and didn't say, see, I helped you. I, we, we gave you that. I don't, I don't do that. You know, we've helped them and, 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 and forgotten about it. But if I see you making foolish decisions or doing things that are silly, I'm going to tell you about it because I love you, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, once again, that's a hard That's something hard. I was asking a friend of mine, what do you say to people who are clearly going like down the wrong path? They're clearly making like the bad decisions or the wrong decisions that's going to end them up like here. 
when you know that they don't want to be here. They say they want to be in a better place. They say they want to live a different life and be in the Lord. And, oh, I see what you're doing and I see what you got for yourself. And, you know, I, I want that. But then it's like, yeah, but you going over that way and that's not how you get here. Like the Lord didn't take me down that way to get me there. And I don't mean that, you know, it's going to look just like, you know, there's this one blueprint for everyone, but I'm just like, this is going to take much longer if you go down that way and go down that road. And I clearly see it. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like Google Maps. Yeah. It's like, you know, hey, this is the quickest route. And then you see that the quickest route have traffic. And it's like, it's like I see traffic. It seems like the quicker route, but I see red and I'm not going to go that way. And, you know, me, I'm just kind of like, well, whatever. I'm just going to go the way that's quickest, easiest when I'm driving. But, you know, you, Dale, you always like, nah, I mean, just go this way. Like, it's I see red on the map. Let's avoid it. And I'm just kind of like, my mindset is like, I'm just going to go the way I know. And a (laughs) lot of times people are like that. They're like, I'm just going to go the way I know. Like, I know what you're telling me, but I'm going to go the way that I know. I know you see red. I see red. Shoot. I mean, but I'm just going to go and hope for the best and still sit in traffic. And you know what I'm saying? But hopefully I'll still get there on time. But it's, I mean, it's just like. And I was asking my friend this. And so she was basically telling me, you know, you still love them through it. You can't make the decision for them. You can't live the life for them. And so um, she reminded me that we either learn by example or we learn by instructions. instructions. Yeah. And so I was just kind of like, uh, Exa- but- you know, learning, learning by example takes time, money and energy. Learning by instructions doesn't cost you anything. It's free. Like, like, like when you tell your kid. Hey, son, that stove is hot. Don't touch it, son. <laughs> you burn yourself. You go over and touch it. <laughs> Told you it was hot. Yeah. You wanted to, you wanted to find out by example. So hey, hey, son, let me come over here. We'll we'll put some um, mustard on it for you. So keep the some burning mustard? down. Mustard. Yeah, mustard. Um, it's a, it's an old southern. Uh, rim, oh my gosh, I've rim. never heard of mustard. Yeah, rim, uh, mustard. But um, so we'll, we'll put some mustard on it for you, and you know, um, a, it'll swell up and go down overnight. But it's like, hey, I tried to warn you, son. You know, but it, but if you want to persist and Doing it your way, then do it your way, you know? You know, it, it's interesting because over the years, I've tried to get people jobs in my company because I, I knew that, you know, I just knew that they had a lot of responsibility and, and family and children, and I really wanted to help them out. But oftentimes people, they rejected me. I don't want to do that. And I'm like, well, you know, it's, it's better than what you're doing now, and it, it'll it'll probably pay way more, you know, than what you're doing now. And I say, even if you use it as a stepping stone, you ain't got to do it forever, but but at least you know I know I know you and your family could use that kind of money you know right now that it would offer you and it's got great benefits. Why not do it now? I mean, I say, if, if if you do it for a year or two and, and, and roll out, that's fine. But at least you would have used it as a stepping stool instead of saying I don't want that job or whatever, whatever. So in most cases, people people have rejected me over the years, and I'm like, hey, that's cool, you know. And it's sad because when when I actually look at the current situation now, it breaks my heart because I'm like, man, I tried to I tried to get you a decent job. I tried to get you, you know in a field that, 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 I, that, that I know could help um, at least take away some of the financial responsibility f- from you know, that, that, that you're having, you know, e- even family members. But they always spit in my face, you know, and, and it's like, it's cool. But like my wife said, um, you know, it, it breaks my heart when I actually ha- have to see them now and be like, man, you know, I tried to I tried to help you, you know, but you turn it down. But ultimately, you can't prevent people from walking down a path that, that they choose to walk in. You know, if they choose if they choose that path, they choose to walk in that vein. Then you know, I, like 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 the Lord. You know, I honor, I will honor and respect your decision. You know, but with each decision comes consequences, and consequences are, are neither good nor bad. It just depends. It just depends on on the situation. They can be good or they can be bad. But you know, when I say consequences, I'm, I'm not saying oh well, it's bad. No, you know, it's good consequences. It's bad consequences. You know, so. um, Babe, would you would you got something before we close out? I I, I didn't want to um I I just didn't want to you know prolong, but I didn't want to um close it out if if you had something that you wanted to say uh, before we left. I mean, no, I mean, I feel like we can go on and on about decisions, you know. Um, I think you made a really good point, and I definitely enjoyed this conversation with you today. Me too. Um, so thank you guys for rocking with us. Until next time, peace. Thank you for tuning into today's podcast episode. Be sure to follow and share your thoughts as we continue the conversation on About This Love's Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channel. Join the About This Love community on Discord. The ATL podcast episodes can be found on all podcast streaming platforms. 
If you've enjoyed today's conversation, please consider submitting a donation via PayPal or Cash App to keep our podcast going. Click on the link below to find our podcast and social media platforms. Thank you. Until next time, peace.